it's attributed to being a Scottish story, and it's called The Great Selkie of Sulskerry. Now, to begin with, what you need to know is what is a Selkie, and then also what this story is about. So Selkies, Selkies are magical people and magical creatures. They come from up in Scotland and Norway, along the kind of the west coast of Scandinavia and up in Scotland and the, uh, the Faroe Islands and up north of, north of England and north of Scotland, and up in the Hebrides, all around there, up in the north, up in the north and at the west, the very top northwest of Europe. And what they are is they can appear as normal human beings. And when they do, they tend to be very handsome if they are a man or very beautiful if they are a woman. But they tend to have quite large, dark eyes. Not freakishly, weirdly large, dark eyes, but beautifully large, dark eyes. And perhaps slightly rounded features. Because when they are not in their human form, they will get out a seal skin and put the seal skin on and they will transform back into their seal form, like a sea lion, a seal, and then they will go and swim in the seas. Now there's lots of stories about, usually about uh, female selkies, women selkies, or, or seal wives as they're sometimes known, uh, and with you know naughty fishermen and various bad men going down to the edge of the sea where the selkie women have taken off their seal skin and are dancing or swimming uh, around in their human forms and they steal the skins and once you've stolen a selkie skin then you can uh, you have power over them and you can command them to do whatever you want to and often there are, there are other stories plenty of other stories about fishermen stealing selkie women's seal skins getting them to marry them uh, having children with them, refusing to give them back their seal skin, but eventually their seal wives finding the seal skin where it's been hidden and then returning to the sea, sometimes with the children, and all of them return to their seal form and escape back to the freedom of the ocean. Today's story, The Great Selkie of Sulskeri, is an unusual Selkie story because it is about a, it has a male Selkie in it. Quite often, men and women fall in love with the, uh, the Selkies, as they are supposed to be very attractive, very handsome, almost magically handsome sometimes. And I'll sing you the song at the end, but the song itself is in Scottish dialect. So it's not quite the old fashioned Scottish language of Gaelic, and it's not quite in English, and it's a little bit of both. So I could sing it to you now, and it'd be a lovely, beautiful tune as it is for the story but you probably wouldn't be able to understand what's going on in most of the story because of the language. So I will tell you the story first, and then when I sing you the story, when I sing you the song, you'll be able to put those thoughts and memories of the story to the song and be able to enjoy it through there. So. There was a young woman she was a young woman and she lived in Scotland, up, up on the northwest coast of Scotland, up where the great Atlantic Ocean rolls in and great waves smash onto the beaches or beat the cliffs. She had lived there for many years and she had lived there for some time now alone. Back in the old days when a woman had a baby and she wasn't married, it was frowned upon very much by society. And she had had to find a house by herself because she had had a baby and she had not been married. In fact, the man whose baby it was, the father of that baby was a man she had met one night and spent only one night with him. But after that, she had found that she was pregnant with the baby and she had, had given birth to it and kept this baby boy, a beautiful baby boy with great dark brown eyes and a beautiful round baby face. She had met the baby's father one night when she was walking along the beach by herself. It was a calm summer's night. One of those nights where the sun never really goes down and the night instead of being black and cold and pricked with bright stars was still warm and deep and purple in colour and even on the horizon far far to the west and far to the north there was a thin strip of orange light when the sun would emerge the next morning if you turned to the east. She had met the child's father one night as she had been walking along the beach. She had met him one night when she was alone, walking barefoot across the sand, watching the waves pouring gently in. 
looking at her soft footprints as she laid her foot into the sand and lifted it up and watched the footprint fill with water and sand and disappear as she walked through the warm, warm summer's night. She had met the baby's father one night when she had been out walking in the summer by the beach down by the sea and the two had met and talked and sung together and then they had kissed and fallen into each other's arms and spent the night together in her little cottage down by the sea but in the morning the man had gone and the girl the young woman got on with her life only to find that she was pregnant and of course as soon as she was pregnant then the rest of her village who thought this was an awful thing to happen because she wasn't married they shunned her and she began to live a lonely life with her and her baby, just alone in their cottage at the edge of the sea, where she would spin wool, wool that had been gathered from the Shetland sheep that roamed the hills and cliffs. And she would sell the wool back to the village and that was how she made a little bit of money, that and beach combing and picking up mussels and cockles from the beach and eating the shellfish that she found there, the shellfish that the sea provided. But the memory of the baby of her, uh, her father's, her baby's father, not her father's baby, she is her father's baby. The memory of her baby's father was still strong in her mind. And she would sit there of an evening while the baby was in its cradle rocking. And she would sit and spin and she would sing lullabies. She would sing lullabies about her baby's father and how she knew not where he came from. And she knew not where he lived or where he was born, but hoped that one day he would come back to her. And it was strange on one night. One night, on a hot summer's night, almost a year after the baby had been born. It was a stormy night and thunder had rolled out across the deeps of the oceans and lightning had flashed far, far out to sea and shown up those tiny islands of rock that stick up like needles and broken teeth from the Atlantic Ocean. She had retired back for the evening, back indoors, and fed her baby and put him to sleep in his cot. And there she was sitting, and there she was spinning away, quietly singing her lullaby, rocking in her chair, singing of her baby's father, and of how she knew not where he came from, nor where he was born, nor where he lived now. And suddenly the door opened, and there, Standing at the foot of her bed in her one-room cottage was a man. A man with beautiful, big, dark brown eyes and a beautiful round face. Handsome, tall, although looking shyly out from under his eyes. Clearly he didn't find himself handsome or think himself attractive. Over his arm was a sealskin coat and he closed the door behind him. He looked at the baby in the cradle and he looked at the young woman and they recognized each other and he said, here I am. I am the baby's father and here I am. Where have you come from? said the young woman. Where did you go? You left us. You left me and now there's the two of us. Where did you go to? Why didn't you visit me? And he explained that on, when he was on the land, when he walked the land, he walked in the form of a man. But when he entered the sea, he was once more in the form of a seal, a great proud seal that would plow the waves and jump freely throughout the deeps of the oceans, swimming deep, deep down to collect clams and cockles on the seabed, or chasing the shoals of silver herring as they shimmered through the Scottish waters. And that when he wasn't on land and when he was at sea, when he was far, far away from land, his home was in a place called Sulskerry. And she knew Sulskerry. She had heard of it. She'd heard the fishermen talk about it. It was little more than a rock. Far, far out to sea, beyond the range of normal sight, there was a small island. And on that island, the seals in the summer would haul themselves up onto the gritty sand and lie there with their pups, sunning themselves, flipping sand over their bodies, scratching away. 
ready to dive back down into the waters, into the rich, fertile, food-filled waters of the Atlantic. But the man's face now became serious. As he pulled from his belt a pouch of money and opened it up and there were gold coins inside, gold coins of a style that she had never seen before. And he dropped this on her lap and said, there, that is for your trouble, young woman. That is for your trouble of bearing this boy and of raising him. But when the time comes, on a hot summer's day, I will return for him and I will teach him how to swim in the foam and I will teach him how to dive and fish and jump and I will take him back to the Selkie people with me. No, she said, you will not take him. It's worse, he said. If you are not careful, if he swims out to sea with me, you will begin to forget about him. You will forget about him and without a child to act as a, a weight, as a chain around your ankles, you will be free to marry. And when you marry, you will marry a man who is a hunter. And when he takes his gun out to sea, the very first shot he fires will not only kill me, but will kill our baby son. No, she said, picking up her child and holding him close. I will never let that happen. I will never let that happen and you will never take him. Keep the money, said the Selkie man. Keep it. I will return when the sun is hot and the sun shines hot on every stone. I will come for my bonny wee lad and take him back to the sea. And with that, he left the purse of gold on her lap thanking her and saying it was her nurse's fee, her nursing fee for raising the young boy. And he left. He left into that hot, stormy night where the air smelt of electricity and ozone and thunder rumbled over the deep and lightning lit up the wave tops and clashed among the cliffs. And he left. Now, from that day onwards, the young woman was worried that he would return and take her baby boy. Yes, she kept the money. She was so poor. She sometimes didn't have enough money to feed herself and could only feed her baby son. And he had not supported her at all. So she would keep the money and she would spend the money. And she did. But she also spent some of it on a necklace, a silver necklace that she put around her son's neck, loose enough to be comfortable but tight enough so that it would never slide over his head. So that whatever should happen to him, even if his father, the Selkie man, came back for him and took him out to sea, she would always know who he was, whether he be, whether he be a boy or a Selkie or a seal. She would always know by his necklace. Now time passed. And the next summer came along, and now the boy was up and walking, running around on the beach with his mother. The sun bore down hot from above and baked the stones until they were too hot to walk on with bare feet. The boy enjoyed splashing and paddling in the surf, but his mother always kept an eye out. Because if you ever go to Scotland and you go down to the sea, it is very likely that you will see seals bobbing around in the water with their heads just above the water, their whiskers whoom, puffed out from their round cheeks and their big black eyes, good for seeing down in the dark depths of the water, just bobbing along and watching the fishermen or watching the people on the beach. And when you see them, it is difficult to tell, sometimes impossible to tell what is a seal and what might be a silky man or woman. Down on the beach she was walking and she started to collect seaweed. Seaweed that, that she would bundle up and take up to her little cottage garden and lay on the earth and allow the, the nutrients to seep in as the earthworms came up and ate it and as she would dig it in. And as she was struggling along with a big bundle of weed, she heard a splash behind her. And looking back at the sea, she saw a man 
a tall man with a beautiful but round face and beautiful large dark dark eyes standing next to her little boy her little boy was looking up and smiling at him and the man at the same time was slipping around his shoulders his seal skin coat as he was draping a little seal skin coat over the shoulders of the little boy and as soon as those coats settled on their shoulders, as soon as those ski seal skins settled, their arms became shorter, their necks became shorter, their eyes became larger, and they dove into the sea. She ran down, down to the sea, down to the surf, calling, no, come back, come back, come back. But there was silence. And then after a few minutes, a little way out to sea, bloop, a seal, a great male seal's head popped up, his head and shoulders looking out from the water and looking back at her on the beach. And then next to him, whoop, a young seal pup's head. Beautifully formed, sweet as anything. And around his neck was a silver chain with a silver medallion, the one that she had bought her son. And as she stood there weeping for the loss of her son, as these two seals turned and dove back into the water, whenever the weather became warm enough, she would walk down to the beach and she would look out at the seals in the sea. And sometimes it was difficult to tell, was it just a seal or was it a selkie? And then she would see one ever so often that would come a little closer to the shore. And as the sun shone down on it and made the waves sparkle like broken mirrors, also glinting round its neck, she would see the silver necklace and the silver medallion and know that her baby boy, now a selkie boy, was at home in the ocean and free to swim the waters of the world. Thank you. Um, I'm going to sing you the songs. The song is in Scottish dialect, so it's partly English, partly Old Scottish, and partly sort of a Scottish slang. So see if you can pick out the song unaccompanied. I wish I had my small folk orchestra here, but but I don't. An earthly nurris sits and spins. And I, she sings, but Lily Wayne. Little can I, my bairn's feather, far less the land that he lies in. Then Ain arose at her bed's foot, and a grumly guest, and sure was he. Sing, here am I, thy bairn's feather, although I be not comely. I am a man upon the land, and I'm a silky in the sea, and when I'm far and far frae land, my home it is in Sulskiri. Then he's taen out a parse gowd, and he is putting it on her knee, saying, Gee to me, my bonny wee lad, and tack thee up thy nurse's feet. It shall come to pass. On a summer's day, when the sun shines head on every stain, I'll come and take my bonny wee lad and teach him how to swim the fane. I am a man upon the land, and I'm a silky in the sea. And when I'm far and far free land, my home it is in Sulskiri. Thank you very much, everybody.
And that is the end of today's story and bonus song edition of the Lunchtime Stories. <laughs>